you took care of me better than I took care of myself. Feel you felt that way? Yeah, I still feel that way. Hi, curious people. Maudie Ayunda here. Sekarang kita lagi di sebuah tempat yang spesial dan kita akan membuat program buka kartu dan akan membuka kartu suami aku sendiri, Jesse Choi. Hai. 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 <laughs> Jesse Choi aka Mas Opa. <laughs> um, and ini udah banyak ditungguin dan banyak banget di request sama teman-teman. So we've kept it a surprise and yeah, it's quite it's quite nice today because it's like rainy. Yeah. It's and cozy. It's cozy. I've made like a hot matcha drink for us. Thanks, babe. So let's get started. <laughs> so do you know how this works? Yeah. Take a card and you read it. Yeah. Jadi buka kartu means open, open card, card, but it also means you're an open card. We're trying to get people to open up. Yeah. And share their stories. Yeah. You know. And yeah. basically, we take turns and picking up a card and asking each other questions. Okay, you ready? Who starts first? Rock, paper, scissors? Who starts first? I meant to start first. <laughs> I'll let you start. <laughs> okay. Ooh, describe our first date. First date? Hmm. <laughs> I have to start with like the context. Okay, okay, start with a the context. A little bit of the context. So we met in business school, obviously. And in business school, we were in the same section. And you take basically every class together for four months, four or five months. First time I met her was there. And so our first date was basically, we have this we have this messenger called Slack, which a lot of companies use, but we also used at Stanford. Yeah, and so I reached out, just cold reach out, like, hey, because <laughs> I thought she was cute. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you think I was cute? Because you are. No, but like, okay, fine. Yeah, Hello, and cute then? and and charismatic. Every time mm. you talked, I was like, whoa, so cute. That's sweet. Anyway, and so then, then, yeah. Yeah, so then I reached out. You want to grab yeah. coffee? Yeah. And I said, okay, let's grab coffee. And she said, okay, bole. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, but bole, that was bole. the mood. Yeah. yeah. And then it was, so one hour of coffee. Yeah. Yeah, right in front of our classroom. And then you showed up like 15 minutes late. <laughs> Not 15. It was like seven minutes. No. Seven minutes late. Okay, somewhere between seven and 15 minutes late. <laughs> I mean, you guys, I had a class to go to, so I like... I had to like pack up all my stuff. Yeah. Anyway, yes, I yeah. did. I did come a little bit late. You came a little bit late. It was okay. You, you like had a hot drink already in your hand, and I. Did remember... I get you one? No, you didn't. Are you sure? I think you were trying to not I come across as keen or something. Yeah, that's not something I would do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then we chatted for like what 50 minutes, I guess. Yeah. And then we arranged that I would pick you up in and out for dinner that day. That's you remember true. that? And then I canceled on that. Which is like that. very famous California yeah, hamburger, cheeseburger yeah, yeah, yeah. place that I love. And okay. then you canceled because you were like, I'm trying to eat healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to eat healthy. Like I'm trying to eat my salads and yeah. whatever. And then you were like, was, okay, okay, fine. fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that was first date. I guess if yeah. that counts as, if that counts as date. But that was more like But that was more out. like hanging Just out. Just getting to know Because konteksnya, teman-teman, um, everyone at business school would just hit each other up and yeah. go to these coffee chats, right? Yeah. With each other and people reach out to one another all the time. Yeah, so when he reached out to me, it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, just trying know. to make friends, you know, or yeah. like networking slash trying I, to make friends. I didn't friends, see it but... as anything more. Yeah, um, and I didn't either. It's not true, you thought I was cute. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what happened? And well, and then after it kind of evolved into something else, obviously. Yeah, and then we started hanging out more. Yeah. And we were texting a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. Okay, First your step. turn. My turn? Yeah. Ooh, fun. Okay. Okay. What's the most romantic thing I've ever done for you? Um, the thing is, Jesse's not the most ceremonial person. So your your romance comes across in like the smallest little gestures. It's like, you know, well nowadays, like I wake up in the morning and you're like, do you want me to make breakfast for you? And like, you want me to cook you some eggs? Would you like that? You know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah, I would like that. You know, <laughs> or like, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just these little things and like, um, words of affirmation and just like us doing quality time a bunch, or like you booking date night for us. 
you like texting me something cute throughout the day and like these like I don't know they're they're really really meaningful but they're not like flowers roses every day and you know okay try again what's the most romantic <laughs> thing I've done for you <laughs> you don't think that's good <laughs> no. it's okay it's okay there's no one like what's the single most the what is the the uh, most romantic uh, what is the one thing <laughs> Um, it's it's really it. hard. I think I think him proposing, you proposing was quite romantic. Okay. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'll try again. I'll try again. Okay. I know now. <laughs> <laughs> the most romantic thing you've done for me is moving here. Whoa, that's deep. It's really, really deep. Okay, explain. You moving here in the context of you know it being so far away from your home, um. And it, it wasn't something that you had in your life plan, you know? You kind of just saw yourself being in the U.S. You had your career there, you had your friends there, and all of these things. And, and we're very open about the fact that you moved for love and for me and to, to ensure that we can stay together. And mm. that truly was like the most, yeah, yeah. To this day, the most romantic thing he's ever done. I'm sorry I didn't say that earlier. <laughs> well, no, it's fine. That's not what I was ex I wasn't expecting anything. Ooh, oh my gosh, these questions are so vulnerable. <laughs> <I'm scared. laughs> what made you sure that I was the one? Hmm. Was there was there even a specific moment? I think before I moved, I wasn't 100% sure, right? Really? Yeah. I didn't know this. Okay. Well, no, I was like, <laughs> I was like 90 whatever percent sure, right? Mm. Right, but I wasn't 100% sure because the whole point of us moving, okay, let's see what life is like there, right? And outside of, uh, we've also only known each other in the bubble of business school. Business school, yeah. Yeah, so like seeing a whole different world, right? Seeing what outside of COVID, outside of like the bubble of Stanford, yeah, yeah all this stuff. So yeah, that's what yeah, we were yeah. testing, right? So that's the last whatever, 5%, 95 but I think what made it 100% was, for me, I think it was, mm, I mean, it's kind of a lot of things, obviously, a lot yeah. of accumulated things, but I think especially when I was moving and I was adjusting and you were helping me get settled and all this stuff, I think you were much more like sacrificial in the way that you spent your time. Like you were so willing to help me in everything. And you always considered me like my needs first, you know? Mm. And like you were, you were super busy. You were also like adjusting to moving back. You had a lot of things going on, but still like, you took care of me better than I took care of myself. Huh? So I think. Feel you felt that way? Yeah, I still feel that way. That's good. I still feel that way, but yeah, I think because of that, it just made me realize like, oh, like we might come from different cultures, so we don't always see eye to eye on everything. But fundamentally, very strong heart. You know, very, very soft and big heart. Very empathetic, and oh, I think that that was important. Mm. So, yeah. That's when you know? Yeah, just yeah. The, the early experience of adjusting to living here and seeing just how much you're dedicating to helping me. Yeah. It's interesting because we've, we've actually had a conversation about this before and I've never heard you talk about this. It's mm. typically like, well, you know, sometime after the first, after like the six months that we started dating or whatever. Oh, that's when I knew like, oh, this is really going somewhere. Okay. You know, okay. but we're talking about like, when did you know she was the one, 100%, right? Mm, mm. And it's like, after all of that, after all the sweet times at business school and whatever, right? And you come into the real world and you're thrown into like the yeah. reality of, you know, all these challenges of your next chapter in life and blah, 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 blah. And I think in those moments that you wanted us to be even stronger as a unit than before. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like when, when everything should have been harder for us to be as unified and as committed to each other when it should have been much harder and we should have been busier and blah, blah, blah. In those moments that you like sacrifice yourself, right? For us and for me specifically. Mm -hmm. I think that's when I knew. Yeah, she could, yeah, she can go through mm -hmm. life Thank with me. Man. I wonder, that was the moment for me. For me, the moment I think was... When I proposed. No, <laughs> no, I knew way before that. Right. Um, but I knew that you were the one. Well, basically, as we were making the decision to move, yeah, I kind of saw you grapple with like big life questions, kind of as we were thinking, as we were finalizing, 
you know, and I just saw the resilience, the openness, and, and the depth of who you are, I think, during that time. And and, and I just, I, I remember I remembered telling myself, like, there's not that many people who kind of like would go on this journey with me, but also who just generally would have that type of openness, that type of curiosity to move to a new country, and that type of, and that capacity for love to, to move for someone, hmm. you know, you really care about. So I think I was like, mm, I'm not gonna find another one like this. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Thank you. What was the biggest challenge during the move and transition? The biggest challenge? Well, I think the most obvious one is like just being in a different culture, right? Which means different people think differently, talk differently, they have different life experiences. When I make certain, I mean, even as simple as if I make certain metaphors, they just don't <laughs> make sense because, I mean, we come from a different, totally different world. And then, yeah, I mean, like being like speaking a different language, right? There's there's also a barrier in terms of my. It affects my ability to connect. It affects my ability to connect, and it affects my like motivation to connect and to do things, right? When every even the most basic thing of like talking to someone or asking for something very basic is like a challenge. It makes mm. me makes me have to think very hard. That was that was like the most tactical. I would say the bigger challenge. I, I think the bigger transition is, of course, just grappling with the fact that like yeah like I've, I've you know I'm, I'm living outside of the US which I've never done before yeah and like my parents are far like I have, I have to have a totally different support system I have to connect with people in a totally different way than I had to before like all yeah. the heuristics of like how to live are kind of like changed um, and then of course career stuff you know everything is different career wise so and yeah, because the ecosystem is different the things that you know, you might have found interesting in the U.S. might not might be less interesting here, or might have less potential here, and vice versa, right? For sure. So you kind of also had to adjust, kind of like the world you or like the the constraints yeah. within which you're right um, functioning. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Or even even more tactically, when it comes to like learning Basa, right? Same alphabet, right? A through Z, and people always talk about how it's easy. There's no tenses in Basa, <laughs> right? Yeah. You just say you just throw words together. It doesn't even have to be in the right order. Like you just throw them together and people so oh, so easy. But it's not, right? There's all these, you can think that if, if you don't live there, but then once you live there, you realize, you know, <laughs> these the, the reason that there's no tenses and all these things is because everything is contextual and it makes it actually much harder for someone who doesn't live in a super high context language country. Right. right. Or, right. yeah, anyway, yeah. or things like that, right? It's, it's so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you definitely tried. Even before you moved, you were like, on Duolingo trying to learn like Bahasa and yeah. like playing every day and then yeah. you thought that you had enough vocabulary, right? Yeah, I think what I learned is like you can learn like a hundred words yeah. and then you can memorize a hundred words and be like, oh, these are like the direct translations and you think that it's a one-to-one -one, like Lagi is again, for example, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you come here and you're like, oh, people only use 20 words, but they use it in, they use each word in five different ways. Right? Instead of the hundred that I learned. <laughs> so, so like I think, like one example that was really funny is like when you learned what laggy meant, it was mostly used as again, okay. right? Yeah. But then sometimes we use it as doing something. Remember sure. when I told yeah. you about that? Yeah. It's like oh laggy apa. It's like yeah. what are you doing? It's not what again. It's like right. what are you, what are you up to? Yeah. Right? And then so, uh, yeah. You know, as you were, you used to ask me a lot of these questions and I found myself realizing that like my language isn't that straightforward. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like, oh, that's right. It can be used in so many different yeah. contexts. No, so the trickiest different. one yeah. that we always talk about is bole. Bole. <laughs> you, you're amused by I, bole. I, yeah, I learned that bole means allowed. Yeah. You're allowed to do something. Am I allowed <laughs> to take this? Right? Yeah. Can, may I take this? Am I allowed to take it? Then I, I would say, Bole, right? Yeah. But then, yeah, bole is used much more broadly. It also means please. Can I? It also means just yeah. general can, can I, yeah. can. It also means yes, please. <laughs> like, the, yeah, when, <laughs> when you say, you know, when the waiter comes and they want to take the plate and then you say bole, right? Yeah, or it's yeah. just kind of like, cool, let's do it. Yeah. It's like, you want to bole, bole, bole. <laughs> See, that's new, I just learned that. <laughs> Really? So, yeah. It's like I sometimes say bole, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
just generally like, yeah, I'm down. Yeah, I'm down for that. There you go. So yeah. Okay. That kind of stuff. It's fun though. It's fun to learn it. Oh, my turn? Yeah. What does being a partner mean to you? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh we talk about this so much. Ooh. We do. Yeah. I'm gonna borrow your definition of it. Okay, well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> That actually works. <laughs> um, but, uh, apa tadi? Apa? Um, what oh, is partnership. Partner? So, I think partnership is very much correlated with like loyalty. Mm. And you use that word a lot. But the loyalty that you were talking about here is not just like, oh, not cheating or like just that type of loyalty, but actually committing and acting as a unit. And really taking the other person's interests and desires and infusing it with yours and like taking that into account as you craft your life together, as you as you as you act on your own individually as well. And just that kind of fierce loyalty, fierce sense of unity. I think that's what partnership is. And the what the reason why I like that definition is it applies to all types of relationships and people can, you know in some ways customize their own version of what partnership looks like depending on their own values and their own sets of dreams and desires and goals in life. And that's why I think, you know, the fact that you moved here was an active partnership. And like hopefully, you know, me trying to meet you halfway with, you know, the, that, that sacrifice or that gift that you've given me is also my way of be, being a partner for you because we're acting as a, as a true solid unit. Makes yeah. sense. These questions Sounds are good. like, are deep. It's, yeah. like, it's, it's hard to, yeah, it's, it's hard to not go like super philosophical yeah. with it. <laughs> we're, it's hard we're, to keep it light, yeah. But, and, and also because we have a tendency to like, go unnecessarily deep with topics. So like, <laughs> when we have these type of prompts, it's like, it's, it's tough. It's true, it's fun. Oh my dear God. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate my Korean skills? And maybe what could be fun relative to your Indonesian skills? Okay. <laughs> Let's start one to 10. Audition, go. No, 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 no. Annyeong. Pogo shikpo. I'll be nice and I'll say three. Diga. <laughs> <laughs> Within the beginner range? Yes. Okay, okay. Anything below five is beginner. You know what's saving it? I really think my pronunciation, okay, it's probably pretty really bad, is like, is not the worst when I try to okay, try. pronounce it right. Say like, say like, annyeong. Annyeong. <laughs> is it bad? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's too short for me to tell. But it's not, it's not bad. Yeah, the pronunciation is better than your <laughs> overall mastery of the language itself. <laughs> but that's not saying much. Okay. Yeah, yeah but I'm learning. You're learning. I'm on Duolingo. It's true. Now, you said, relative to me, my basa. Hmm. My basa is better than your Korean. Of course. I think like 10 times better. I mean, yeah. So if, okay, my, no, that's not fair. Let's say if my basa is a 10, which in reality is like a four, <laughs> okay, then your Korean is like a... You're telling me that still I'm a three. Yeah. <laughs> 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 maybe, if, maybe like a five, maybe like a five, relative to mine. If my basa is 10, which it's not. No, I'll give it to you. Your 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 Bahasa is a lot better because you you started learning earlier on because you were gonna move here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and for me, it's relatively more more recent, like a few months, because I'm like I'm more motivated now that I've like I've spent quite a bit of time with your parents and your sister and That's stuff, true. and like I really really want to get to like just just a place where like I can just say hang. cute little mm -hmm. things. Yeah. I can kind of hang. I can at least like understand them, yeah. you know? You got a long way to go. I you want, know. You wanna know a fun story? No, what so is it? I, so when I used Duolingo, right? Cause I used a lot of Duolingo before I moved here. I was, I think that there's not that many, there must not be a tremendous amount of Indonesian learners on Duolingo, <laughs> but I was the number one, number one <laughs> student on Duolingo for Indonesian. You know that? <laughs> what number are you for Korean? There's probably more Korean learners than There's Indonesian. so many Korean learners here. Yeah. You, got, so you got a long I way to think... go to catch up. Yeah, one. I want I want to get uh, to like at least like top five on the rankings. That's gonna be very hard. Yeah. But you can try. Yeah. Were you there for a while? Were you? No. 
or you number one for no maybe one day because it always shifts if you don't play the next day then you know you don't you don't maintain the streak or whatever yeah that's so fun and then since then they actually added more like i also got to the end of like their curriculum i think and then they added more and then they added more what is it leagues because yeah, you can like, more like gamification yeah there's stuff. more tiers right you go from yeah. like silver to gold to platinum to whatever right i don't know yeah what, right and then i got to the end and then they added a few more since then so i'm nowhere near the top anymore Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My okay. turn? Yeah, it's your turn. Aha. Related to the last one. Translate this sentence into English. What or sentence? Basa. You'll see. Oh, oh, you. oh. Oh, oh. Oh, my. 저의 손은 추입니다. 저의 손은 추입니다. I know this. <laughs> Wait, what a coincidence. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? Nice. See, and the thing that I love about learning a language on Duolingo is the fact that it's so accessible. So it's free and you can learn more than 40 languages. So in my case, you know, I'm learning Korean and then Jesse learned Bahasa, but you can also learn English, for example, if you want to. And, and also the modules are really small and quick and so you can kind of slip it into your routine. And I also really love the gamification stuff. Jesse was saying that he was like ranked number one Bahasa learner in the US, <laughs> was it? Yeah. And that's so fun. And then there are streaks, pronunciation quizzes, and when it's gamified, it's like, it's so much more fun. So for you guys who are interested in learning a language, maybe English, um, I actually also saw a lot of comments, biasanya. Banyak yang ngomong kayak, Kak, gimana sih caranya ngomong bahasa Inggris yang lancar gitu kan? So, this is a tip for you. Download Duolingo either in the Play Store or in the App Store. Did I do a good job? Was that kind of easy? What does it say? My last name is Choi. Whoa. Che. Wow. Che. 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 Yeah, there you go. Che. Nice. Che. Jisok. <laughs> Your Korean name. <laughs> nice, baby. Yeah. That means I'm a 10. Because <laughs> you're a Choi? No, because I got that right. <laughs> Ooh, I really like this question. Okay. One thing about marriage that's rarely talked about, but you think every couple should know. Whoa. That's hard. <laughs> One thing about marriage that's rarely talked about, but every couple should know. Well, I think it's important to just admit that it's only been like, what, less than a year for us? Yeah. So, I mean, we're also not the most experienced mar yeah. married couple, we but... Can, we can talk to the first yeah. eight months yeah. of being married. Hmm. Or we can like rephrase it, like what surprised you? What surprised me? Or what, something about marriage that... I'm gonna start answering about. the question. Too. How do you have an answer? Well, I don't know, I, I'm also gonna think. I think for me, Okay. Maybe the biggest thing is you really have to, like you have to feel like you're just going with, well, I don't know if I should say this. You have to feel like you're <laughs> catering to their preferences more than you did before. I don't know. Like they say, okay, let me, let, me, let me give a little bit of context. They say that service or serving the other person in a relationship should feel like I'm serving 70% of the time. Mm. And then the other person feels like they're serving 70% of the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So my point being both feel like they're doing more for the relationship. Right. Right? Instead of like 50-50, both feel like it's like 70%, right? And, and that's, that's when it's actually... That's how you create a healthy relationship, mm. right? When both people are like over committing to the relationship yeah. and also not like counting score, right? Right. Like, oh, like I'm 70, so you're 30 and I'm bitter. Like you're not putting in as much, right? So it's both of us are both over investing mm. to the relationship. Mm. So I just feel like that, but more. Okay. Maybe. Okay. But it's not... I, I, Honestly, the honest answer is, so far, there hasn't been any... Huge surprises. Yeah, anything that's been particularly yeah. surprising, but... One thing, one thing that I will add, or maybe it's kind of a separate point, but for me, what's been really, really helpful is that to envision you as like a baby <laughs> when we're like in conflict or, or where, when we're in disagreement about something. Hmm. I think... You know, sometimes there's like a tendency of like, oh, like respecting your your partner as like the individual that they are 
But what ends up happening, well, first of all, I respect you. But what ends up happening too is like when I focus too much on you as like a person, as like an adult and all these things, I, I feel a little bit more defensive. Mm. You know, I, I think of you as more like, oh, this person's like intentionally trying to make me feel not that good or like all these things. But like when I actually envision you as like, no, like we're, we're all babies and he's a baby and we're all, you know, trying to figure it out. Trying to figure it out. Yeah. I also come from a place of more protectiveness because yeah. it's like, well, you know, maybe maybe he's, you know, he's he's crying out because of something else. Maybe, maybe there's something deeper there, hmm. you know? And so it's just coming from this place of like love when I don't think of you as like this enemy or whatever. And so I think babyfying is really, can be really powerful in in, in relationships. Hmm. When, when, when in conflict, not all the time. <laughs> yeah, interesting answer. Better than mine. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Wait, is it me or you? It's me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what's your favorite memory of us together so far? Oh no, there's so many. Ooh, there was this time when we did um, a trip mm -hmm. with our friends to Zion, <gasps> right? What's Zion? And then Zion is like a like a park, like national, a national park. like a national park. It's a canyon. Yeah. A canyon, canyon. Yeah, in the U.S. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and we went with a group of folks and we went like went hiking and all these things but there was like a moment where we were able to like drive away just the two of us and I remember that we basically decided to like chase the sunset yeah the sun was like disappearing but we could kind of see that the sunset is still quite obvious in in like whatever towards the left or whatever and we tried to follow the sun yeah. and then we ended up going to like this random hill and we yeah. got lost like a cliff top of a cliff top of a cliff off the road and then we like just stepped out of the car and watched the sunset yeah. and we had like music blasting in the car too so there was a little bit of music a little ambiance a little ambiance music whatever and we just watched the sun go down and I it's like one of my Favorite memories. Yeah, that was fun. Honestly, it felt like a movie. That was fun. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really. You remember what we ate after? Where we went to go get a little snack? In and out. No. What the? <laughs> Where did we go? <laughs> we got like um, little crepes at that oh, that's like right. little crepe shop. Hey, was that before? I don't know. After I think. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. That, that was, was fun. fun. Yeah. That was a good time. Is that a good one? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a very memorable one. Yeah. Okay. What makes you feel most loved? So Guinea, you always say that mm -hmm. like my love language, my love language is everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As in, I want a little bit of quality time. I want a little bit of like affirmation and you want a little touch. bit of everything. I want a little bit of everything. But I think the most, most important language for me is still words of affirmation. And words of affirmation, the type of affirmation that I need isn't one that's like, oh, you're super pretty, or like you're, oh, you're, you know, kind of like these compliments, but just kind of like this deeper sense of like, from the words that you're saying, I believe you that you love me, or you have faith in me, that you're confident in me, that you like value me, that you don't take me for granted. It's just these other words, it can be anything, but basically words that make me feel valuable and make me feel seen. And that's why, like, I don't really need gifts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Except when it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Okay. From a scale of your <laughs> Korean skills to my boss's skills, how good am I at giving you the words of affirmation that you... Oh, you're very good. I am? You're very, very good. Really? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You're not super, like, you don't, like, co just compliment. Your, your words go a little deeper. That's what makes me feel just so secure and so at home nowadays. <laughs> Hi, Jen. Ooh, uh, what's one thing, skill or ability, that you want to steal from me? Whoa. Good, huh? That's good. That's real good. Hmm. I want to answer lot. this for you, too. There's a lot. But, but also pick something that doesn't overlap, because we, we have some overlapping skills. Maybe, maybe. I think 
for me, it's your mm, your like sense of confidence, but it's not the same type of confidence that we were talking about before, like the deep confidence. Yeah. Because I think we both kind of have a similar level of deep confidence, but it's more like the, the outer confidence. Like you don't ever get nervous in terms of like speaking in front of big groups of people. Well, I'm sure you do, but not that much, very little. And yeah. you always tell me like, I never get nervous talking to people, right? Or like, you just like, or when there's people around and like, you just like start, you like bust into song, right? You like start singing. <laughs> like I would never, I could never do that. You know, I don't have that kind of like, that level of like, just comfort in any situation or like lack of stage or whatever. Mm. So you have that like very natural stage presence that I think, mm. you know, a lot of people might go like, oh yeah, you know, a lot of people have that, but inside they must be nervous or whatever. But like for you, you're like actually not nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I get nervous. Yeah, but like, but I'm yeah. saying you're like 99th percentile in terms of not being nervous, you know, and like most people are 50. Or and like getting out of it in the first like, three seconds yeah. or something yeah. like that. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's like a more fun one that's like very yeah. like tactical that I think it's fun that you have, that you got going for you. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. I want to answer one as well. No. Okay, go. But you have so many skills. I want to steal your like natural athletic ability. Mm -hmm. Why? Of all the things that you could steal, you'd steal my athletic ability? Wait, wait, wait. You wait, think wait. my best thing is my no, no, ability. No, no, no. I'm not, yeah. Okay, okay, fine, fine. fine. Oh, you, you, whatever, you pick whatever you want, but I'm just, I'm confused. Okay, why don't you explain? No, it's not just the athletic ability. I think it's like, you have a way of learning things generally very quickly. And you kind of get to a point yeah. of like, basic mastery quite quickly. Okay. And this applies to a lot of things. Cooking, any type of sport, any type of thing that you get into, whether it's like gaming, anything, gaming. or like okay. language or whatever. You okay. just, there's this ability to go really deep into something and this motivation to, to stick with it and to go quite deep earlier on such that, you know, you can, such that it translates to, to the actual skill of playing. What is this? Is this cooking or like <laughs> this playing is like, tennis? Or what this is, is this? like tennis and like golf. Oh. And then also another thing that I want to steal from you is like your ability to like then conceptualize like physics <laughs> into sport. You do. You like whenever you're teaching me golf, you're like, babe, think about the physics. And I'm like, I don't want to be thinking about physics right now. Okay. But like, you're like, you go really, you have the conceptual in your head and then you're kind of able to translate it into like actual body movement. And, yeah. and I think it adds a lot to your ability to mm. I, yeah, I don't, I don't settle for like, this is just what works for me, you know? Yeah. I don't settle for that. I always go like, why objectively, <laughs> from a scientific point of view, is this the right way to do something, right? Right. <laughs> right. Like if I don't get to that level, then I'm unhappy. Exactly. So I have to get to that level of like, why is the path I'm taking scientifically proven, logically in my mind, to be the fastest, most effective way to get to where I want? <laughs> exactly. Right? So that's, that's a little so weird. That yeah. type of thinking, I think is quite valuable. Okay, I have another one for you. Okay. I thought of a better one. Okay, what is it? Not better, but equally good, but another one. Mm. And this is a deeper one. I think you, this is related to the question that was asked before about like, how did I know you were the one? Mm. I think you have an inherent ability that is significantly higher than the average person of like loving someone. As in like, you just naturally, you always gravitate towards just naturally choosing to love someone. You don't think so? Well, like you, you have a natural affinity to like, yeah, like this is like a fellow human and like, I'm gonna love this person and I'm gonna see the best in them and I'm gonna oh, trust yeah. them and like that's... Now, is that like in all settings? Like we <laughs> argue, not argue, but we, we dis disagree on this all the time. Is that really the best approach in all settings? Not necessarily, right? But sometimes it comes across as what, naive. naive, right? Or whatever, right? But I do think like in the grand scheme of life, what is life? What is happiness, right? What is, what's the purpose of why we're here? Like your ability to just naturally care and love about, love someone, even if they've done nothing for you or you don't even know them very well, I think it's very powerful that nobody shares. I certainly don't share, but you, uh, you know, you have that. Yeah, no one else does. It's interesting. It's a superpower Whoa. that needs to be, if you can point it in like the right ways and you can like really hone it, ooh, mm. huge. I think that's what makes you very charismatic too. Anyway, we're, we're going into like, <laughs> we're like just talking about everything, but yeah. Anyway, we stopped there, but yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you, baby. 
What's your favorite moment throughout our entire <coughs> wedding process? Throughout our entire wedding process? Yeah. Both ceremonies? Yeah, all of them. Okay. My favorite was not like the most enjoyable necessarily, but my favorite in hindsight, looking back and like the memory I cherish the most is obviously when you came out. In the first, in the first ceremony, in the actual Akadnika, right? Yeah. And then you came, and then we were, sit, we were standing at the table. I was standing at the table, behind the table. And then you came out, right? Mm. Came out and then took a left towards me, yeah. 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 I'll never forget, yeah. yeah. Did you think you were going to cry? I thought there was a chance that I would cry, but I did not expect to cry as much as I did. <laughs> People always say like, oh, like it's so emotional and memorable and blah, blah, blah. And like you see this person you love. It's like, yeah, I know. But I see her every day. I see her walking towards me every single day, like whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like sure, she's like wearing some like white whatever, but like whatever, right? <laughs> That's bad. how I thought. Right, but right. this is how I think about many things. Like whatever, yeah, it's, it's easy, it's fine, whatever. And then when it actually happened, it's like whoa, totally yeah. different. It's crazy, yeah. I did not expect that. And I, I'm like a pretty ugly crier in my opinion. I looked so like my eyebrow, like in that picture, my eyebrows are like. This. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, but you were like, I was like you were, like, like, were kind of like shaking. And, and I was like weeping. I don't know why. I don't you know why. Sweetie. I didn't expect it. You have it. a big heart. I guess and, so. and I, I didn't think expect it. Maybe it's also because you didn't expect it. And the, the entire thing was more emotional than you thought it was going to be. Yeah. Right? Because I thought it was going to be more like a... Like more of a ceremony. Yeah, like a cultural like, ceremony. Right, right. Mm. And then even like the honoring your parents part, when you're like apologizing slash, you know, giving thanks and all these things. Yeah. You... You were also moved. Yeah, yeah, that was also crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. It yeah. was a sweet moment. Yeah, that was fun. So that was my favorite. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't the. It was, it was like also stressful in the moment. Yeah. Because I was also like, gotta stop crying so that I can like say the, say the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you did it in one go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Yeah, but I was like shook. I was shook, and then I was like trying to calm myself down, and then, but then when it came to the moment, like the adrenaline kicked in, and I was just like, clarity. Yeah. Oh yeah, clarity. my baby. <laughs> That's how I felt, yeah. It was fun though. Yeah. Okay, my turn. Next. Yes. Is it? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. If I was a movie character, what would I be? <laughs> Spiker, no spiky. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like a little porcupine? <laughs> no! Dora the Explorer. No, that's Swiper. Oh, yeah! I've never even seen Dora <laughs> the Explorer. I know that's Swiper. <laughs> it's a little fox. It's a little fox. Um, no, no, no. Movie character, huh? It's kind of tough. Like, what's like a really like fun, like spiky, smart character in Iron any cartoon? Man. <laughs> That's just your your <laughs> your That's dream my character. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How about you? fun, spiky, kaya, really smart. Oh, Robin Hood. What's Robin Hood? The the fox. The fox? I'm yeah. a fox again. <laughs> <laughs> the second fox. That I... <laughs> There's just something about like. A fox yeah. that that sits right in my head, as in like Jesse, kind of like a fox, kind of like steals hearts. What the? <laughs> <laughs> but like just very because foxes are really smart. Okay. And they're they're, they're very cunning. Well, you're not cunning, but you, you, you're you have a little bit of like I don't know whatever. So you gonna get it? So I'm a fox. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you don't like it? No, it's fine. It's good. What do you want to be? Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Iron Man. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. If you were a movie character, who would you be? I don't know. You decide. Ainun. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, last. How do you picture you, um, our retired life? How do I picture our retired life? I think this is like going off of our little conversation from the... Stanford uh, video. We <laughs> talked about retirement. I would like to get to a point where I don't have to do things I don't want to. Mm. That's how I'm choosing to define retirement. I think we'll always do things that are productive, that we like, but that's not really retired. I don't know. Retired to me means like, okay, I give it, I hang it up. Like, I'm not working anymore. I'm gonna like sit at home and but like, do nothing. But that's kind of not but, not how you would define retirement for yourself, right? Yeah, and I don't think we would ever do that. If yeah. that's the definition, then I don't think we'll ever retire. But for me, I can imagine like you're a professor, or like I, I'm a writer, or you're a writer, yeah, something yeah, like that. Something That's a little like bit more that. like, yeah, like that. And then like organic grocery store or something. <laughs> I don't know. That would be fun. Or like yeah. we like 
garden and we sell like organic plants from our garden or like yeah or like I, we spend a lot of time outdoors that's like how i envision yeah like a lot of like walks yeah and a lot of like maybe it's the beach maybe it's whatever it is but just a lot of yeah being out but i'd like to give back somehow i think because like that's why i think i want to be a professor because i think it'd be really fun to just kind of give back right the knowledge yeah. Yeah. or like that's why i think about like the grocery store something i don't know you're just like giving to the community something good for the community that's, yeah. that's yeah. kind of how yeah, i feel yeah, yeah. that would be the ideal like productive giving back but only doing things that feels good yeah you know yeah. feels right and yeah. feels good to us yeah yeah and then making a lot of time for like exercise and golf yeah, <laughs> and other and sports <laughs> For me, again, it's the, it's the outdoor stuff. Yeah. I would love to also be like always learning something. Yeah, of course. Maybe like, maybe I've picked up knitting or, okay, maybe knitting is a little, yeah, but like maybe, maybe I'm back into gardening or. I think there's no scenario in which either of us stop learning. Yeah. Like, there's just no way. I don't know. Yeah. There's no fun. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. seem true to, to who we are. Yeah. And I'm not trying to sound like snobby or elite or whatever. It's not like that. It's just like, I, I genuinely think that when we're learning something new is when we're having the most fun. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, that's kind of it, babe. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Was it fun? It was fun. Yeah. Was it deep? Yeah. Deep. Yeah. Kind of yeah. deep, huh? Yeah. Yeah. We went kind of deep. Yeah. The good questions. Whoever made them. Challenge. Jesse Choi closes. Buka kartu. And yeah. tell them to subscribe, please. Okay. Do it. Okay, teman teman. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. We had a good time chatting, trying to talk about some deeper things and try to get some insight into our life. So I hope it was fun to watch. I hope it was fun to listen. Yeah, and if you have any feedback or if you have any thoughts, <laughs> <laughs> leave a comment below. Don't forget to what? Subscribe. subscribe like and subscribe. Turn on and notifications. Turn off notifications. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys soon.